Hey, Lance here from Fly Fish Food. I want to show you a really quick, easy way to make a balanced leech. We call this one the half wit balanced leech. Dude, that's a big brown bro. All right. This is going to change your world if you tie balanced leeches because it's so much easier than tying a pin and a bead and an extension. Maybe, maybe, maybe you could argue that it doesn't balance exactly as well, but it sure fishes just as well for me, and it's a lot easier to tie. So we call this the half-wit balance leech, and this is more a style of tying than really than a particular pattern, but uh, it's just an easy way to make a uh, fly relatively balanced, balanced enough to fish below an indicator or on a midge tip or however you like to fish your balanced flies. Uh, so with that in mind, all I really have here is this is a jig hook. In this case, this is an Umqua XC400. This is a size 12. You could use your favorite jig hook. That's a barbless option. If you wanted something that's barbed, you could also do like this Tiemco 413J that has a micro barb on it. If you really, really insist on fishing a barb, that works well too. Um, the real trick here is using these little insta jigs. So this is a hairline insta jig. This particular one for this size of hook uh, and this weight that I want is a 1 8 in black nickel and these come in lots of colors. They come in orange and in pink and in gold and in copper so you can kind of uh, make your balance flies any way you like with this particular setup. So what I've done is I've got the insta jig on the hook and I put it on what I think is backwards. So it has a kind of a small hole and a large hole and I put the hook point through the large hole first so that when it's on here it will sit a little farther forward recessed over the eye with a little bit more weight forward you'll see what I mean here when I get the thread in place to hold it so I'm gonna use this is 140 denier uh, this is Danville you could use 140 in UTC or any any kind of medium thickness thread and I'm just gonna start it right behind the insta jig and I'm going to actually build up a little bit of a ramp of thread to kind of hold this bead in place. So I'm going to try and get the bead relatively straight like that so that it's got a little bit of the weight as you can see here extending in front of the eye. And I'm going to use brush on super glue to just put a tiny bit of it right behind the, the bead to hold it in place. Keep that thread in place and then I'm going to build up a little bit of a thread ramp to really lock that, that insta jig in position. All right, now that we've got that thread ramp in place, I'm gonna work the thread down towards the bend of the hook, and I'm going to add some black marabou for the tail. This is Fish Hunter in black UV. You could use natural, or just regular black too, not natural, but just regular black dyed. Uh, would work fine too. I tend to favor this one. I don't know if the fish can actually see the UV in this case, but it has worked really well for me. This fly has been probably my top producer the last couple of years as a balanced fly. And uh, because of that, I tend not to vary. I tend not to mess with, you know, if it isn't broken, don't fix it sort of a thing. So I'm going to use this black UV marabou. I'm going to pull a little bit of it off the, the side here. Again, this is a size 12 hook. You could make these bigger, you could make them heavier, you could get insta jigs for this same size. If you wanted to make them heavier, you could get the next size up. You could make them on a 14 for a little damsel or a 16 for a small balanced damsel. There's all kinds of options here. I'm gonna tie the marabou in right at the back of the hook and kind of end it right about where the taper for my uh, thread ramp for the bead, holding the bead in place. And so I've now got a pretty smooth underbody you can see there. It doesn't need to be perfect, but relatively smooth. And then I like to leave these tails a bit long. And so to keep them from fouling, oh my gosh, I'm getting a text message right in the middle of this. Who is this? Oh, it's Cheech. He never stops bothering me. He's always got fishing questions and he's always bugging me after hours. You think working together all day long, he'd be able to get all the questions in that he needs. Cheech, quit bugging me. I'm working here. And by the way, if he ever tells you he's rowing you into fish, just know that he learned all those things by texting me. All right, so here we are. We got the marabou tail in. Sorry about that. Let me actually turn my phone off because he'll probably text me again here in a second. The marabou tail, I'm going to tie down the bend of the, of the hook just a tiny bit. So it looks a little bit goofy because the end of your tail, it angles down slightly. 
you know, a really pretty fly in the box would have would be tied up a little further, would end about here so that the tail is going out straight a bit more. But believe it or not, if you leave this little, or if you tie it down just a tiny bit further down the bend, I don't know why it works, but it makes it so that your, your long tail doesn't foul as much. And the long tail helps a lot because it swims a lot more that way. Now what I like to do, I'm not going to leave this that long. I'm going to come in to where, about where I want it, maybe two times the length of the shank and just break it. I like to break it rather than cut it because the ends break off and they're not quite as blunt that way as they are when you cut it. Still a pretty long tail, you know, roughly maybe double the, if we were to double the length of the shank, you're basically about there, maybe a little bit longer than double the length of the shank. If you wanted to, you could add some cranberry uh, holographic flashaboo here at the end of the tail. That's optional if you do two or three strands is plenty. You also don't have to use the cranberry if you don't want to. I'm going to because I like to add a little bit of cranberry in there, a little teeny bit of flash. I don't like too much flash on these, but just a tiny bit down each side is great. So a couple strands. This color is cr called cranberry. It's kind of a, a deep red. That's perfect for this red and black combination. So I'm using the same strand. I've got two on each side. I just wrapped it around, cut it the same length as the as the tail. Um, the cranberry number on that flashaboo is 6942. Otherwise, just called cranberry flashaboo. Let's see if you can get to where you can see that one. It's a really cool color. All right. Next up is the body, and we're going to use a dubbing loop here. And you could use any number of materials again, and you could mix and match these colors to your heart's delight. My favorite for this particular pattern is the Arizona Diamond Diamond Dub in the black red. It's got a really neat, deep, dark uh, black and red. Another option would be this STS Trilobal dub in Bloody Black Leech. has also a hint of red in with the black. And then you could also do Midnight Fire in lots of things. Diamond dub, or in this case this is Ice dub, a little more of a sparkly blend. Again, this is just a style of tying and you could make these balance leeches in all kinds of colors and all kinds of combinations. So now I'm going to use my Stonfo Roto Dubbing Elite Twister. This is a little dubbing tool. I'm going to make a pretty long thread loop here to add some dubbing to. I'm going to seal it off. Then I'm going to take the bobbin and wrap it around. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing there. A couple of times to close off that thread loop. And then get it right to the back end of the fly. Then I'm going to move my main thread up to the insta jig and put a half hitch in place to hold it there, like so. I'm going to get that on the bobbin cradle so that I can now use my rotary function. So now I've got this dubbing loop and I can grab the dubbing that I like and just add small amounts of it to the thread. And I'm going to I'm going to pull it out in small chunks like this and slide them in. The thing I like about this tool is it allows me to open the loop and close the loop without having a finger or anything in there. So if I want to close it, I simply pull down on the tool. If I want to open it, it's kind of hard to see there because it's out of focus, but the more I push up, the more it opens. The more I pull down like this, the more it closes. So I can slide little bits of material in at a time. And as I get it slid, slid to the top, I can slowly pull down on the tool to kind of lock it in place so it doesn't fall out of my dubbing loop. Dubbing stays in place that way. And I just put small pinches of it in here. That ought to be more than enough. In fact, I could probably even get rid of that last one. That's probably too much. Now I've got it held in there. Now I'm going to use the little dubbing twister here. I'll just spin this little ball bearing and it spins that up nicely into a rope like so. And then I'm going to use the rotary function and just make a sparse body all the way to the eye like that. Relatively sparse. <laughs> Not sparse compared to a nymph, but sparse compared to a, uh, a dubbing loop and a, and a leech. Okay, I'm going to capture that with the thread, get rid of the excess on the thread loop, set that tool down, get out the whip finish, and I'm going to whip finish right behind the insta jig here. Pull that tight, get rid of the thread, and then the last step here is just to get your Velcro tool. This is the little Stonfo uh, dubbing. It's got the comb on one end and the Velcro on the other. I'm just going to use the Velcro for this one and just stroke that that dubbing back towards the tail so it kind of all blends in. Creates a little more of a, 
a smaller, thinner profile like a leech would have. And at that point, other than adding head cement, you're all done. The half wit leech. We call it the half wit because this insta jig just makes it so much easier to tie a balance fly. You're, a lot of people are going to ask, couldn't I do the same thing with the tungsten bead? And you can get a similar result, yes, but the tungsten bead tends to sit a little farther um, back towards the shank than the insta jig. The insta jig sits a little further forward on the, on the eye, and it balances just a little bit better than a, a regular slotted tungsten bead. So there you have it, the black and red half-wit leech. Give it a whirl.